Dave Weinberg joining us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Uh, Dave, the first thing I want to start with is the fact that you know you've been covering the Eagles for a while, so you were there when they were in their last Super Bowl. Talk about the vibe yeah. and the differences between this year's team and that team, because obviously, yeah, there's some similarities. You know, they both started with the same record. They both had to beat the Vikings on the way to the Super Bowl. You know, both teams have very good defenses. Both teams have personality on their teams. So what has the vibe been like for you comparing the 2004 Eagles to 2007? Well, that's a, uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say the 2004 team, they were kind of expected to be there. I mean, they had come close for the last three years in a row before that. And, you know, they were loaded with, with stars like Donovan McNabb, Terrell Owens, and those guys. So it uh, wasn't, you know, a surprise at all for them to be where they were. This year's team's really defied expectations when you consider all the injuries and stuff they've had. And uh, they just seem a little bit uh, looser, I think. They're, they're, I don't want to say they're playing with house money, but they, um, they don't seem to be feeling the pressure as much as maybe the, the 04 team was. How valuable is it for these guys to have the likes of Chris Long, like Garrett Blunt, Malcolm Jenkins, um, you know, all these guys who have played in Super Bowls along with a head coach in Doug Peterson and an offensive coordinator in Frank Reich who have been in the Super Bowls as well? Although that's a huge advantage for them. Um, like I said, they have the experience. They know they've been doing a good job all week, really, of, letting, of getting them prepared. Uh, for what this week is going to be like with all the distractions, all the hype, all the excitement. And uh, they really went out of their way to to make sure that the team, you know, enjoys itself, but to also make sure that, you know, they to remember that you're here for a reason that, you know, uh, come Sunday is, uh, is what you're really here for and uh, not to lose sight of that. You mentioned the distractions. It seems like every year the Super Bowl becomes a more of a bigger and bigger event, not just football-wise, but culturally as well. You know, you look at now, it's opening night on Monday, whereas, you know, the media night used to be on Tuesday night. So, for you and your experience covering the Eagles, how is the Super Bowl different this year than back when the Eagles were in Jacksonville? Well, it's about 50 degrees colder. <laughs> <laughs> um, and other, but other than that, yeah, it's more of a, uh, it's more of like a, a spectacle, uh, at least uh, the, the days leading up to it, like you said, uh, I remember in Jacksonville, it was the uh, media day was held on a Tuesday afternoon in Altel Stadium, and you kind of just went around the stadium and, and talked to whoever you wanted to. There were some guys with podiums, but now you know there's fireworks, there's uh, you know all this hype, all this excitement. You got we always had people like coming out of the woodwork, but it seemed like it was even more of the case um, the other night. You know, people dressed in shark outfits and dog masks and. Uh, some guy came from Austria dressed in like lederhosen and uh, you know just the, the usual like ridiculous like questions that the, the players have to answer. Uh, so um, Donnie Jones had a pun a hoagie that was made by Rick Lovato. <laughs> you know, so, so you know it's uh, I guess it's like part of it's all part of the the shtick I guess. Dave, before I ask you my first question, my grandmother, she, she made me ask you this. She said, she's like, the two hardest games for the Eagles this year, you picked against them, and I was on the air. It was the Thursday night against the Panthers, and it was the NFC Championship game against the Vikings. So I just had to throw that out there and give her some type of credit because she I'm loves you. And she's sorry, Mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my question is, Dave, is that you look at this matchup with this Patriots defense for Nick Foles, who's coming off his best game as an Eagle since 2013. Do you see any type of weakness in this defense to where Nick Foles cannot produce that same type of production because that was crazy, but still has some type of success? Um, boy, that's tough. Because, I mean, Bill Belichick and, and uh, Matt Patricia are just – they're masters of disguising things, of changing things. You're never going to see the same defense like – you know, two day, two games in a row. So I'm not really quite sure, like, what they have in store for Nick. Um, I do think there's a, there's some opportunities there for him, although I think it may be more for the offense as a whole rather than Nick specifically. I think that um, the run pass option, uh, the RPOs, is going to be big uh, because I, I think the Eagles will be able to exploit uh, the defense a little bit with the running game. Uh, I'm expecting like you know Jay Ajayi and Corey Clement and, and Legarrette Blount to have, you know, an even bigger role than they've had in the past. But you're at some point it's going to come up. The Knicks going to have to make some big throws or some clutch throws, I should say. Um, 
you know, when they're going to come and how they're going to come, I'm really not sure. But uh, it's going to be an interesting chess match. Like, they've been talking all week that this is more of a chess match than checkers. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out on Sunday. Dave, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but, I mean, you've covered this team for a long time. So if anyone knows this <laughs> fan base, it's you. How big would this win be? Just for what Philadelphia fans has had to endure, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the show with the Phillies and the Sixers and the Flyers. How big would this be? I argue that this would be the biggest championship of all the Big Four. Yeah, it is. I mean, you, I mean, uh, the Phillies certainly had, did a lot to uh, to appease the fans in 2008. It's been a little longer for the Sixers and the Flyers, but this is a Philadelphia's Eagles country. I mean, there's no getting around that and. You know, you have generations of fans that have, have uh, lived and some have died without seeing them uh, win a title. So, uh, and even uh, I was talking to like Deuce Staley today about it, and he was just saying how, you know, this is this is just like so big for, uh, like you said, not even the fans that are here now, but their aunt, but their grandparents, their parents, that uh, some of whom aren't around. And for if the Eagles can somehow um, pull this out. Um, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of happy people, that's for sure. We're talking with Dave Weinberg of the Press of Atlantic City, Eagles beat writer here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline on 97.3 ESPN. Dave, under Doug Peterson, you could buy in the regular season of the playoffs, the Eagles are now 17-1 when they rush the ball at least 30 times. They get at least 30 rush attempts in a game. Is is that just a crazy you know, statistic, or is that a real deal for this team? No, it's real, I think. I mean, Doug has always maintained that he wants as balanced of an attack as possible. Um, the caveat to that, though, I think it might be a little bit misleading because usually the Eagles will run the ball more often when they have the lead. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna if you're gonna having success, you're going to run the ball, not you know, to chew up time, maybe – I mean, I put a little bit of pressure on the opposing defense to wear them down a little bit more. So I think that I think most of them are, are most of those 17 wins probably came when the Eagles had to lead at some point in the second half, and that's when most of the rushing attempts came. I mean, I'm not, I don't have the the, the statistics in front of me, but um, but Doug has always said that he's always maintained that the, the running game is, is very much a big part of their offense, and he's always tried that to maintain the balance as much as he could. Also, when you run the ball, Dave, you're playing keep away from the Patriots. So many times, one Correct. of the reasons why the Patriots, they win these games because they keep getting opportunities in the fourth quarter to come back. You know, if you have a lead against a team, what's the whole point? You don't want them to have all these opportunities come back. So in some ways, it's also, if you run the ball, you're not allowing the Patriots to keep pace with you in the game. Yeah, there, there is something to that. You're right. Um... I do think that the Eagles just they have to stay aggressive no matter what the um the score is. That seems to be the mistake that people make, like with Atlanta in last year's Super Bowl, Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago, they tend to like ease up on the gas a little bit. And all the Patriots need is that little opening and they're gonna pounce. And the Eagles just can't afford to do that. If they happen to get a big lead on, on Sunday, they have to just stay aggressive. They have to keep doing what they were doing to get that lead and not let not give the Patriots any breathing room. Dave, you look at the overall perspective on this team, and I think it it can't be overstated the value of a guy like Lane Johnson. The fact that you saw how much the team struggled without him last season. The fact that when he is in the lineup, it just seems to make a whole world of difference for the offense. And uh, you know, he's a vocal guy. He's a he's a big character on this team. You know, talk about your thoughts on Lane Johnson, not just his impact on the field, but in the locker room. It's funny you say that because I just. I spent about 10 minutes with him today. And, um, yeah, he's a very big uh, part of what they do. Um, generally, uh, right tackles aren't really um, given this much attention, but he's done such a good job of facing elite pass rushers week after week after week. Even just Stalin talked about it today. And that's a big reason. His ability to handle those guys has been a, is a major reason why the Eagles are where they are. And you're right. He's a uh, it's funny because he's a he's a very colorful guy uh, to the media and outwardly, uh, but in the meeting rooms he's like all business and you know no no joking around no messing around at least you know not too much anyway so um, yeah he's a, he's a very big part of, of of what they've they've been able to do like you said last year he missed the ten games um, 
I'm not ready to say that he's the reason why they didn't make the playoffs, but um, I think it has something to do with it. But um, and he's but he's definitely a reason why they are here now. You know, Dave, you look at overall at this Eagles team. You mentioned earlier the fact that this team, no one expected them to be here, and especially with all the injuries they've they've overcome and they've gotten past. Is it fair to say that win or lose on Sunday, yeah, Eagles fans would be disappointed, but there's a lot to look forward to, not just in 2018, but beyond that with this team. Yeah, there is that. Um, they, they're pretty much built for the, for the long term when you think about it. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, they extended this year. Uh, there's a, a lot of young players here that, you know, are only going to continue to get better. Um, I, but I think everything really depends on Carson Wentz. Um, if he's able to come back from this injury and be as good as he was before. I mean, I, I have little doubt that he will, that he won't be able to. I mean, I think that, you know, he's one of the hardest workers on the team and he'll do everything, everything in his power. But he does have to find a way to, um, I don't know, protect himself a little bit better, not take as many chances uh, as a runner, learn when to slide, learn when to get out of bounds, uh, don't take punishment that you don't have to take. Um, but if he can come back all the way, then I, there's no reason for the Eagles to uh, to think that the Eagles won't be in you know contention for a couple of years down the line. However, nothing's guaranteed in this league, and, you know as you well know. Um, like Donnie Jones has played 14 years, and this is his first Super Bowl. And everybody thought when they were in 04 that it was just the start of something great, and it didn't happen that way. So. Uh, you never can tell. So you really have to take advantage of the opportunities when you get them. Yeah, Dave, I was just going to say, you know, I was I ran a couple guys at the gym earlier this week, and they were talking about, oh, well, he'll be back. And I said, well, they said, said the same thing about Dan Marino. So, Yeah, that's very true. You know, and, and the Eagles had that, you know, that little run from 2001 to 2004, one Super Bowl to show for it, and, you know, they haven't been back since. So, you know, there's something to be said for that. You I mean, you really have to – uh, take Like I said, take the advantage of the opportunities because you never know when they're going to come around again. Dave Weinberg, press of Atlantic City Eagles writer here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hang along with Deshaun Hendricks and Dave joining us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Dave, how do you expect this game to play out? Do you think it's going to be a low-scoring game, a high-scoring game? What are your expectations for how you think the game is going to play out? Um, I think it'll probably get off to a little bit of a slow start. I think that both teams will probably like feel each other out a little bit. Um, but as the game goes on, I think you're going to see the offenses uh, put some points on the board. I mean, you can never count out Brady's ability to to make adjustments on the fly and you know just to, to find the little openings in the defense that, that are always going to crop up. And if anybody can take advantage of them, it's him. But by the same token, this isn't the same. Um, dominant, overwhelming Patriots team that you've seen in the past. And so I also think that Doug Peterson's done a very good job of probably um, finding his own openings in, in the Patriots defense. So I think you're going to see both teams like in the 20s at some point. Dave, I know it's Wednesday, but this is the day we <laughs> talk to you. So Yeah, Dave, sure. it's decision time. I, the, the Sean, the Sean has been pining for this moment to know who Dave is going to pick. Because I think who you pick and how you pick is going to affect the Sean's pick. <laughs> you know, I've caught so much grief over the last two weeks about, you know, my pick against in the NFC Championship game. But people seem to forget that I picked them to beat the Falcons the week before, where not a lot of people Dave, did. nobody remembers when you were right. You could be right 99% <laughs> of the time, but everybody remembers the 1%. Oh, absolutely, and that's definitely <laughs> the case now. Ah, um, oh, Dave. You know, people have been begging me, you know, pick the Patriots, that way the Eagles will win, or pick the Eagles to make sure that you're... Uh, you cover your high. You atone for your sins. <laughs> I'm going to tell I'm not, I don't really want to tell you, but I'm going to. I'm picking the Eagles to, to win on Sunday. There we go, Dave. That's the spirit. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what I wanted to hear, Dave. And folks, you can get the press of Atlantic City and find out what the score is when Dave writes it in the paper, right? Oh, I'll, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting. And, and tell your mom she'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Dave, always appreciate the time. Stay warm up there in Minnesota and safe travels home after the game. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Take care.